which is presented by OJ Tokes Ministries. If you would like to learn more about our host, OJ Tokes, please visit his website, ojtokes.com. That is O J T as in Tom, O K as in Kite, S as in Steve.com, ojtokes.com. Welcome again to the While You Are Single podcast and enjoy the show. Here is OJ Tokes. Well, hello. Welcome to the While You Are Single podcast. My name is OJ Tokes and I'm excited about sharing with you and helping singles um, prepare for a wholesome relationship. Welcome. I'm glad that you tuned into the While You Are Single podcast, and I just want to encourage and help singles to to grow, and especially those that want to get married and um, those that want to do it the right way, those that want to have healthy, wholesome, joyous, godly relationships. If that's you, you're in the right place listening to the right podcast, because that's what this podcast is all about. It's about encouraging singles um, through the word. Um, My goal is to inform and inspire you to find and fulfill God's purpose in every aspect of your life. And if that purpose includes marriage, um, it's my great pleasure to share all I've learned uh, the past few years to help you uh, achieve that goal of getting married. And um, uh, that's what God is going to do for you, but um, sometimes we have to learn God's ways of doing things. There are a lot of voices out there, and um, they can lead you astray, and I'm sure um, you might, like a lot of people, try different things to get into a relationship, and it just did not work out. So I hope um, this podcast will um, help you, help point you in the right direction and help you do things um, God's way. So. I've been involved in singles ministry for about 12 years, and um, thanks to God's grace, I'm a newlywed. As a matter of fact, just got married about seven months ago. So I know what it's like to be single in your late 20s. I know what it's like to be single in your late 30s. As a matter of fact, I was two months shy of turning 38 when I got married. But thank God, um, I held on and uh, trusted God all the way, and God blessed me with a remarkable wife, and um, God is good. Uh, the marriage is going great, and it's, it's going to get better. Notwithstanding, um, over the past few years, you know, um, just observing and just living life, um, I'm getting a, feel, a feeling from a lot of single people. Um, there's this vibe I get like God has disappointed them. Um, there's a feeling of unrest, a feeling of... Um, disappointment like God let them down you know like they've been seeking God as far as they know and they're trying to do things the right way and it seems like it's not happening and for some there's the temptation um, to just go back and just do things the way everybody else is doing things to get into a relationship Um, it looks like you know trying to do things God's way is just unrealistic and nothing is happening you know some people are really uh at least from their perspective, they're truly seeking God, trying to do it God's way, praying and trying to um, live a godly life, and nothing seems to be happening. And it seems like there's a feeling like God God messed up or God doesn't know what he's doing. And I must confess, there were times in my life where I felt like, you know, I was doing what God told me to do, you know, and, and I felt like, you know, maybe God wanted me to see somebody or go out with somebody, but it didn't work out. But one of the things that helped me, and I hope it helps you, is that God does not make mistakes. God does not lie. And God does what he says he's going to do. The problem, if we're honest and if we admit it, is that sometimes we just misunderstand what God is saying. We really don't properly understand what God says sometimes in Scripture. We might read something And more often than not, the truth is, it's not that we read it. We just heard somebody say it and interpret it a certain way. And we think that that's the way to go when it comes to the way God does things. And I'm going to I'm going to address this thing extensively throughout um, the numerous podcasts I'm going to be having. It's going to be a weekly podcast, by the way. So join me every week 
You can download it and share it with whomever you think can benefit from this, and you can listen to this as much as you want. But um, sometimes we just misunderstand what God is saying, and you know I've done things feeling like God was leading me in a certain direction, and um, I fell on my face quite a number of times. Notwithstanding, I always ended up telling God this, you know best. God, you know best. And if you don't mind, you can just say it out loud after me. God, you know best. One more time. God, you know best. And he most definitely knew best because he hooked me up, I would like to say seven months ago, but I met my wife a long time ago. Nevertheless, we actually started seeing each other about... Um, over two and a half years ago, and we got married about close to seven months ago. Nevertheless, I'll probably talk about that from time to time during the podcast, so stay tuned. So here it is. I want to encourage you because God does not lie, and God does what he says he's going to do. The problem is a lot of times we don't know what he says. We don't know his word. We don't know his scriptures, and if we do know the scriptures... If we do know what he said, sometimes we don't understand what he said or we misinterpret what he says. We take what somebody says about what he says and take it as gospel. And it could be an erroneous application of what he said or it may be a relative. In other words, application. In other words, it meant something for a specific audience at a specific time, but it's not applicable to us. Let me bring some clarity to what I'm saying. For example, let's look at thir Psalms 37 verse 4. Psalm 37 verse 4. I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, more often than not, most people quote the last part of that verse, which says, God grants you the desires of your heart. God grants you or God gives you the desires of your heart. So the general consensus is, as it pertains to a single person who wants to get married, their mindset is someone who's seeking God. Well, God is going to grant me the desire of my heart because my desire is to get married. But that is not happening. So what's wrong? Either the verse is false or this is bogus. And God's, and, and people are feeling frustrated and are feeling like, well, I'm doing what the word says. You know, God is supposed to grant me the desires of my heart, but my desires aren't being granted. I'm not getting what I desire. But we need to go to the whole scripture, the first verse, the hope, the, the first part of that verse actually says, delight in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. So there's a condition that needs to be met. In order to allow God to grant you, to give you the desires of your heart. And that is the delight in the Lord. Delight in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. Simply, obviously, delighting in the Lord has something with having a relationship with God. It has something to do with delighting in God, taking pleasure in God, allowing him to have his way in your life. And as a result, he deposits what he wants you to desire inside of you so that he can give it to you. At face value, that's what the scripture says. But let's go a little deeper and get some, uh, uh, some more understanding about what it means to delight in the Lord. The word delight, the word translated as delight because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, originally written in Hebrew and Ar Aramaic. But the Hebrew word translated as delight actually is anag, A-N-A-G, anag. And it means to be soft and pliable, to be soft and pliable, which means when it says delight in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart is simply saying be soft and pliable in God's hands and he will grant you the desires of your heart. So for the single person who feels like God is letting them down, my question is, are you soft and pliable in God's hands? Can God has, have his way with you? 
Is God having his way with you? Can you boldly stand before God and say, God, I am soft and pliable before you and you are not granting me the desire of my heart. Can you say that? If you can, I can tell you this, rest assured, that God will bless you with a spouse. It's a matter of time. If you are delighting in the Lord like it means, rest assured that God will grant you, will give you your spouse. It's just a matter of time. It's either you're not ready, the person is not ready, or the circumstances are not ready. But be encouraged and trust that God does not lie. Because God says when you delight in him, when you're soft and pliable in his hands, he will grant you the desires of your heart. And if being married is a desire in your heart, according to his word, he will grant you that desire. The question is, are you really being soft and pliable? That's between you and God. And if you really believe that you are doing what God's told you to do, then rest assured God will bless you. Delight in the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart. I like the way the contemporary English version of the Bible says it. The CEV, Contemporary English Version of Psalm 37 verse 4. He says, do what the Lord wants. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Trust in him and he will help you. Do what the Lord wants. Trust in him and he will help you. I find it interesting that it says delight in the Lord. Because in a sense, we have a picture of what that means. The first Reflection, the first depiction or revelation of God bringing a spouse to somebody has something to do with the word delight. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 8, we hear how God put Adam in the garden of Eden. Eden means delight or pleasure or pleasant. The same meaning for the word delight in Psalm 37 verse 4, Anag, Anag is not the word used for eating, but the meaning, the light is the same, similar, because it has something to do with delight. It has something to do with um, pleasure. So Adam is placed in a garden of delight, Eden. What God does with Adam in Eden is a picture of, of what God expects of us when we delight in him, when we are soft and pliable in his hands. So let's look at Adam and how God brought Eve, his wife, to him. God, number one, put him in an, in an environment of delight, the Garden of Eden. Eden means delight. God placed him there in Genesis 2.8. In Genesis 2.15, God gave him a job there. In other words, God gave him purpose. God told him to tend and keep the garden, Genesis 2.15. Then in Genesis 2.21, God brings the wife out of, the, of his side. So here's the process. God places him in delight. God gives him purpose in delight. And God gives him a partner in delight. God placed him. God purposed him. And God partnered him, Genesis 2.8. 8, Genesis 2.15, and Genesis 2.21. A picture of what it means to delight in the Lord. God placed Adam in an environment of delight, and there God positioned him, God gave him a job, and God gave him a spouse. So when I'm saying, when you are saying, I'm delighting in the Lord, I'm being soft and pliable in his hands, what you are saying is, God, take me wherever you want me to go. And once I get there, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. If you are doing that, if you are delighting in the Lord, if you are soft and pliable in his hands, if you are allowing him to lead you to a place and there he gives you your purpose, rest assured he's going to give you your partner, your life partner, your husband or your wife. When you're where God wants you to be, doing what God wants you to do, you're reflecting that you are pliable and soft in his hands. Do that and God 
will grant you the desires of your heart. And if part of those desires include having a mate, God will do it for you. Thank you for listening to the While You Are Single podcast. It's going to get even better. Stay tuned. Looking forward to talking to you next week. God bless you. And talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to the While You Are Single podcast. We hope that you were informed, inspired, and impacted. OJ Tokes has written a life-changing book titled Rejected for a Purpose, How God Uses Rejection to Help You Find and Fulfill Your Destiny. If you would like to learn more about the book, please visit ojtokesministries.org. That is ojtokesministries.org. If you like Christian inspirational hip-hop, check out OJ Tokes' Christian inspirational hip-hop album, A Breath of Fresh Air, which is now available on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, and other music outlets. You can also learn more about his music by going to ojtokesministries.org. Thanks again for listening to the While You Are Single podcast, which OJ Tokes presents weekly, every Monday. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, please share with your friends and join us again next Monday. Until then, take care and stay blessed.